Hi, okay, so we're still working with the JOSM OpenStreetMap editor to do the GNS name import for the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team project. Um, I just covered layers, and this is kind of a follow-up to the layers, because in working with this particular task, I discovered a little bit of advanced layer usage that you might find useful. So as we always say, when you're getting ready to merge any particular node, the very first thing you need to do is look around and see if you can find residential areas that aren't marked, because when you overlay the maps, you're kind of counting on these marked up areas to show through so you can see where it may or may not apply. So in the process of doing that, I realized that this is what my imagery looks like for this particular task. And you can see it's kind of problematic to go through and find residential areas that aren't marked. I can do a pretty good job here. Like, for example, there's one that's not marked. Um, and that works out pretty well. But the problem that I run into is, you know, what happens when I'm looking for the residential areas that aren't marked here or here? Um, and my solution is always Landsat 8. So I turn on the Landsat 8 layer, and now I can start to see some of these places that aren't marked. Like these are probably all settlements that run along this road. I think this road is in the, yeah, that road's in this black area, so these are probably settlements. Now, I'm not going to really go through, again, you can also do the false color. The false color will help sep separate some of these things, and you'll get pretty used to what the false color colors are for settlements versus rocks or bare grass, bare ground, and that sort of stuff. So between these two Landsat layers, you can get a you know, you can you can find a lot of stuff, but you can't really be sure because there's a lot of other stuff going on here. And this is where the layers come into play. This is advanced layer work. So if I'm trying to find residential areas here, I can use my JOG map, the one that's extremely accurate, and I can start to see, okay, the JOG map thinks that there may very well be a settlement here and a settlement here and again you can look at the contour of the road to help you place it exactly and a settlement here and a settlement here and so if I come over here and I start making my transparency see what happens here okay if you can't really tell just by looking at the satellite the Landsat 8 imagery what is a settlement and what isn't you can sort of use this map to help guide what you want to concentrate on. And this is sort of telling me that this is probably a settlement. Um, you'll notice there's a spelling difference here, Bombay versus Bombay. So we'll look at that when it comes time to place it. But this is probably a settlement here. And there's clearly some settlements along the road here. And this looks like a settlement. So my point being, this looks like it's probably a tiny, tiny settlement. My, po my point being that you can use the transparency of these layers to help you figure out some other stuff. And, you know, the JOG map is pretty helpful for that. The AMS map is going to be less helpful because it's usually much less accurate. So if, for example, if we come over here and look at Bombay, they have Bombay here, but if we... You know, you can see that its circle misses this. That's actually pretty close. Here, I don't really see a settlement that matches up with that. Here's where I'd have to start to look at contours and figure out what it might really be applying to. This one, I don't know. I, I so don't trust the AMS map that it's really difficult to use it for this sort of helping you find unmarked residential areas. But anyway. It was one advanced layer technique. The only other layer, advanced layer work that I think you might get used to are the keyboard shortcuts. And I really only use two, and that's to switch between the layer that has the GNS data import on it and the layer that is the OpenStreetMap data. And it's kind of an interesting 
It's kind of an interesting keyboard combination. It is the shift key and then the letter A. And then you can stop holding them and then you hit a 1, a 1, a 2, a 3, 4, 5, etc. to switch to any of those layers. And like I said, you really only ever do any editing on these top two layers. So it's pretty rare that you'd want to switch to these other layers. But you can if you want to, but I don't usually do it. So it's Shift A, and then you can hit the 1, and you can see it drop me up. So I don't need to do all three at once. I need to do the Shift and the A at the same time, but then I can take my fingers off and hit the 2 key. Shift A, 2, and now I switch to layer 2. Sort of interesting if you watch down here, if I hit, shi if I hit uh, Shift A, and wait for a second, it actually shows me that I can switch to any one of them. I can actually even use this menu to switch to them if I want. But it pops up the available options. Shift A, comma 1, Shift A, comma 3. That comma means you don't have to do all three at once. You just do those two, and then you do whatever number for whichever layer you want to switch to. And I would suggest you practice that. Shift A 1, and shift A2 because you'll be switching back and forth between these layers pretty often. Not that often, but often enough that it's nice to know the sheet keyboard shortcut. And if you took my advice and made control shift Z the merge, then your left hand takes care of a lot of the work you have to do and you don't ever really have to put your right hand on the keyboard. So that was just a little bit of advanced layer work that came up when I was trying to solve these issues and I thought I'd share it with you. Thanks. Bye-bye.